What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gamescast Now, episode four, topic four. I'm Alex. This is our conversational gaming show, and this week we've been covering a lot of stuff on E3. This week has kind of been a theme of talking about games that could get announced, should be announced, anything E3 with video games. We're going to be continuing this leading up to E3. We're going to have more videos um, containing E3 things in them, and then once we get to E3, we'll, of course, be covering E3 as well. Now, for this video, I want to talk about Ubisoft. I want to talk about Prince of Persia and Will we get an announcement for a new Prince of Persia game. Now, Prince of Persia has obviously gone through quite a lot of ups and downs, and it's a special game, and it's a special game in a genre that people really do enjoy um, to a lot of people, okay? And Prince of Persia is a game that hasn't been around in a very, very long time, not since 2010, May of 2010, um, when it coincided with the film that also was released in May of 2010. That's the last time we've seen that game. It did not make an appearance on Next Generation Comics consoles at all. And you know, when you talk about Ubisoft and you talk about these games, the games that they've kind of kind of forgotten and kind of just left behind, one of the ones that really always comes back and has gained a lot of uh, news and kind of positive news, especially if you're looking for the game to return, is Splinter Cell. And it does very well seem like we can get a new Splinter Cell game or maybe a remaster or a complete remake of the old Splinter Cell games for the for this generation of consoles or the next. Um, that one is, you know, very, very popular in the news cycle. Every every so often we do hear about that. Ubisoft has commented on it and said like we know people really really want these uh, this game that people really love Splinter Cell and we're going to you know and I do think we're going to get a new one. At E3 I do think I 100% think that we're going to get an announcement of a some kind of new Splinter Cell game. Prince of Persia is a lot more tricky and my answer to my own question is I honestly think no. I don't think Prince of Persia is gone for good. I don't think you know they're going to leave leave it dead forever, but I don't know if now is the right time. And I think especially because it's not the same game as Assassin's Creed, but it's close enough where I feel like they really have come into their own with Assassin's Creed games, right? And they've really tried to make that their their big thing. And I know they have a lot of other big things, right? I think Skull and Bones could be a big thing at E3, um, but obviously they have Assassin's Creed. They have games like For Honor. They have games um, like their Tom Clancy games, uh, The Division. That that game is obviously a wild success for Ubisoft. So they have so many of these big games, and I feel like because they found success with them, they were able to move on from some of their past games. I feel like Prince of Persia would have been brought back a while ago if they weren't succeeding in other ways. But again, the games like For Honor. Now, For Honor, a lot of Ubisoft games have had the problem of people jumping on very early and then selling an insane amount of numbers, but then leaving very early on. Um, after the game comes out. Again, a game like For Honor, a game like The Division 1. Um, the Division 2 sold good, but in, uh, in terms of numbers, didn't necessarily sell as well as the first Division. But they have these big franchises, right? And they're trying to do Skull and Bones. They're trying to do uh, you know Beyond Good and Evil. So they're trying to do a lot of really different things, and they've, and they've found success with a lot of different games. And I feel like if they didn't find success with these games, they would have brought back Prince of Persia, Splinter Cell, I think they would have brought that back earlier. Now, now, Splinter Cell, it's been less time in between the last game. And Splinter Cell, I just feel like, is a more polished game. Prince of Persia, another reason. And it's not just because, you know, it's not the biggest property in the world. It's not because Ubisoft has necessarily forgotten about it and left it because of games that have done so well. That's part of it. But also the fact that Prince of Persia has never been, uh, like, a complete darling in terms of critical reception or commercial of reception. Now, the last game has been, you know, it did get really really good scores in terms of user ratings, but critically, it did not. Critically, it got like in the sevens as an average game, and you know, we've just come from a time, if you guys are watching this, and you guys are PlayStation fans, say, we just came from Days Gone, you know, getting recognition as that kind of 70s game, right, like an above average game. Some people would label a seven an average game, whatever, but there's people that really, really enjoy a game, and it's okay to love and enjoy a game that critics and people sometimes label as as a seven. Now, so Prince of Persia having that is not a big deal. The fans, however, did speak in terms of their reception. I mean, the, the user ratings for Prince of Persia, the Forgotten Sands, is much, much higher. But sales figures is another thing to keep in mind. You know, Prince
Prince of Persia games have never sold um, all that well. So you have all of those things kind of coming together and really a Prince of Persia game from Ubisoft would kind of just be fan service to who knows who, right? And I feel like that's maybe why Ubisoft hasn't done anything yet is if they do bring back Prince of Persia, if they do it, they're obviously going to have to do it at a, a very high um, level, right? They're going to have to do it at a very, very high level. They're going to have to possibly do it for the next generation of consoles because if you announce a new Prince of Persia, you have to think it's probably for the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet or whatever they want to call it. And that obviously, ha you know, it has some tricks to it and that obviously makes it pretty difficult for them to make it. But you're also going to put a lot of people on this job, right? You're going to have to hire, you're going to have to have a team somewhere that's going to do it. You're going to have to have people working on it. It's going to be a really big um, undertaking. And for a game like Prince of Persia, Ubisoft has to ask themselves, is it worth it? You know, the last game has now been out nine years now and, you know, we've, we've, we've found success. We're doing games like Skull and Bones and all these other games and we're trying to make sure that those games work. We're kind of moving to a little bit of a live service kind of thing. And that's another thing. I mean, Assassin's Creed isn't a live service. Assassin's Creed is that storytelling game. But does Ubisoft decide that that's the only one that they want like that? Because you have games like For Honor that constantly come out with new, you know, fighters and new this and new that. You have games like Skull and Bones, which is kind of like that online piratey game, right? But that's an online-ish game. You have games like The Division. So you have all these games and they're kind of moving towards that kind of crossing the line of those live services. And does Prince of Persia work with that? No, it's a story. You know, it's a 10, 12 hour game, but it's kind of more aligned with those Uncharted kind of games, right? And it is like that. It's kind of like the mix of Uncharted, um, Assassin's Creed. So I feel like it finds itself in a really, really tough place because I don't think there's a huge, huge abundance of people that want it. I feel like it would be a tough job to actually make it. I feel like if they're looking back at their history of, of this kind of game and being like, well, is it even worth doing because of how long it's been out and this and that. And then you look at the fact that it's not really the kind of games that they really make anymore, right? A lot has changed since Ubisoft of 2010. A lot has changed in that company. So it's tough. I Again, I don't think Prince of Persia is gone forever. I feel like a remake or a remaster would be more likely, but I also honestly don't see that happening this year either. But I don't think it's dead for good. I think it could be brought back, but I feel like this E3 is not going to be focused on Prince of Persia. We're not going to see it there. And guys, because of the focus of Gamescast now, on games I want to quickly talk about in the description below there's a link to Gamefly and Gamefly obviously if you guys know what that is it is a service where you can rent and actually buy games and movies um, the link in the description is for a free trial it's for a free 30 days so if you guys are looking to rent any game you can take out a game or a movie at a time it's for 30 days you can rent any game for absolutely free you can rent multiple games so you can really get a good value out of that there it puts you in a subscription service after that but you guys can opt out of that if you want so there's no catch really involved 30 days you guys can rent and play as many games as you possibly can during that time again the link is in the description below and if you guys click that and you go through with that it helps the channel out and i would very much appreciate it guys let me know in the comments below if you think i am what do you think when do you think we'll see another prince of persia game make sure you guys subscribe to our youtube channel podcast now hit that bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up and thank you as always for watching this games cast topic i hope to see you on the next one